Part D is about writing. So here we can practice writing a persuasive essay. Let's talk about editing conditional sentences. Let's study five types of errors. And when you study them, pay attention to the errors that you make mistakes in and you can correct before you hand in your assignment. Number one, fragments. We practice every day, period. Unless the weather is bad, period. Now, if you're talking about spoken English, sure, those are fine. But for written English, don't begin a sentence with unless and then have a period after it because the word unless is a subordinator and that means that this dependent clause needs to be attached to an independent clause. So let's do it like this. Take out that period and then make the unless lowercase. So it's now one sentence, a complex sentence like this. We practice every day unless the weather is bad. Maybe they're talking about tennis or some other outdoor game. Let's look at number two, punctuation. If I had a car, I would be able to get to work easier, period. Here we need to add something. We need to add a comma after the word car. That's the end of the dependent clause, the if clause. Remember when a DC a subordinate or dependent clause comes first, then you need to put a comma after it before the D, the independent clause or the result clause in this case. The next example, I would be able to get to work easier, comma, if I had a car. Now in this case, we need to get rid of that comma, omit it, delete that comma. If we have the result clause, the independent clause first, then don't put a comma after it. We can put the subordinate clause, the dependent clause, the one beginning with if, right after it without a comma. Number three, the placement of the word if. Here we see it is cloudly, it is cloudy if you cannot observe the stars. It is cloudy if you cannot observe the stars does not make sense. The word if is in the wrong place. We need to say if it is cloudy, comma, you cannot observe the stars, period. All right, so make sure that you are using if, the subordinator, the conditional subordinator, at the beginning of the appropriate clause. Number four, use of would or will in the if clause. If I will be elected mayor, I will create more jobs. Now this is a real conditional. In English, we need to use a simple present tense, not the future, in the if clause. So we say, if I am elected mayor, I will create more jobs. Will create more jobs, that's future, and that's the result. So we use future only in the result clause, but not in the if clause. The next example shows, if she would find another apartment, she would move. Don't use would in both clauses for this unreal conditional. Use the past instead in the if clause, like this. If she found another apartment, comma, she would move, period. Number five, let's look at the use of tenses in unreal sentences. Imagine this. If he loses his job, he would go back to school. Now this present unreal conditional is good in the use of would go. He would go back to school. However, the verb in the if clause 
should not be present tense. It should be past tense. Imagine this. If he lost his job, comma, he would go back to school. Period. The last example shows this. If I had been the boss, comma, I would fire her last week. Past unreal. If I had been the boss, that that's a good use of the past perfect. But I would fire is used for present and future. We need to use something that's in the past. So we need to change that to I would have fired her last week. In D1, editing, you need to correct errors in these sentences. So, for example, you should read the worst case scenario, comma, if you want to learn how to survive in different bad situations. Here we need to correct the punctuation of the comma. Here there is an error in punctuation. The comma is inappropriate. We need to delete it because we already have a result clause. When the result clause, the independent clause comes first, then don't put a comma. Only put a comma after the dependent clause. When you try these exercises, check your answers after you're finished. Check your answers with the answer key. Beyond the sentence, using implied conditionals. Implied means not stated directly. In extended writing about conditional situations and results, good writers don't use sentences with if clauses repeatedly. Rather, they use a combination of sentences with if clauses as well as sentences that imply a conditional meaning. Let's look at this example of three paragraphs. Even though most people are more conscious about recycling these days, landfills and dumps across the nation continue to fill up. Some basic changes in our behavior could have a major effect in reversing this trend. Large corporations could have the biggest impact. If corporations used less packaging, everyone would save. Less packaging would mean less garbage. In addition, consumers would be attracted by environmentally friendly packaging and they would be more likely to buy the company's products. So notice here, when a single condition, the one that's in bold, when a single condition has many results, the if condition is usually stated only once. The sentences that follow can just include the result clause because the condition is implied, it's repeated. The next paragraph. Companies would also save money on waste disposal and this also implies that the same condition above applies to this result. On an individual level, everyone needs to start recycling consistently and more importantly, properly. Recyclables must be cleaned and sorted correctly. Otherwise, if not, they become too costly to process. For example, at one point several years ago, New York City stopped its recycling program entirely when it became too expensive. The program could have worked, but people didn't follow the rules. Since then, it has been reinstated with simpler rules, but the program's success still lies in individual participation and adherence to the rules. With some small changes, we can all have a big impact. Now, in this last paragraph, sometimes a condition can be implied by words with words like otherwise or else with or without and but. These words can imply a 
condition. For example, recyclables must be cleaned and sorted correctly. Otherwise, they become too costly to pr process. This implies if recyclables aren't cleaned and sorted correctly, they become too costly to process. So notice that in this academic par uh, passage with several paragraphs, there is the if clause here with many results, and then there are some implied conditions using words such as these. So pay attention to the various ways to write sophisticated, mature sentences that either state directly or imply conditionals. In exercise D2, practice working on implied conditionals. For example, number one, with some small changes, we can have a big impact. What does this mean? Let's write an if clause to make sure we understand it. This means if we make some small changes, we can have a big impact. All right, so go through the rest of these and write some conditionals. What is implied by the sentence as it's written? In part B, you may think of a choice you made in the past that was a positive turning point in your life, an important milestone in your life. What would have happened if you had not made the same choice? How would your life be different? Make a list of consequences. For example, learning to speak English. You learned to speak English, what would have happened if you had not learned to speak English? If I hadn't learned to speak English, da 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 da, you talk about that, you write about that. In part C, write one or two short paragraphs describing how your life would be different if you hadn't made the same choice. And when you're writing a passage that's longer than a sentence or two, you may omit the if clauses so as not to be too repetitive because sometimes the if clauses have more than one result. And then there are other ways to imply conditional forms as shown in the previous examples. Maybe you would write something like this. Learning to speak English was a big turning point for me. If I hadn't learned to speak English, I wouldn't have been able to come to school in the United States. I also wouldn't have met my girlfriend who lives here. Coming to the United States gave me a lot of confidence, too. I used to be pretty shy. And I really came out of my shell when I started school in the U.S. I needed the experience of leaving home. Otherwise, I might still be quiet and insecure. So you can see this paragraph uses some past unreal conditionals and it uses some implied conditionals as well. In exercise D3, you may be asked to write uh, an essay, composition, or a short paragraph of 150 to 175 words. You may choose one of these topics. Decide if you agree or disagree with the initial statement. You can say why you disagree or agree, and then persuade your reader to agree with you. Of course, you want to use the writing checklist to check your work. So here are a few topics to think about. A mandatory garbage recycling law should be passed. Think about the following. What will happen if we don't control the amount of garbage being produced? How would 
such a law benefit people? How would different people and organizations react to it? What would have to happen to make it practical? Another topic, everyone should have access to free health care and prescriptions. Think about the following. Why is free health care necessary? How would this service help people? What about the drawbacks? Who would provide this service? Who should pay for it? What could happen to the quality of health care? And here's the third topic that you can consider. Art museums should not be permitted to charge high admission fees. Think about the following. Is art important? If so, why? Why do art museums feel the need to charge high fees? Who would lower admission fees benefit or harm? At the end of your writing, please use the writing checklist. Reflect on your ability to use conditionals by answering these questions. Did you use real conditionals to talk about possible situations and results? Did you use unreal conditional sentences to consider a imaginary events and situations? Did you use alternatives to if? Did you omit if clauses were possible? Did you use any other implied conditional forms? Did you check your sentences for correct form? Check your writing before you post it. Observe the due date. And later, read and respond to at least two classmates who don't yet have responses. Perhaps you'd like to do some work beyond the classroom. You may consider in the future writing an essay on one of these topics. Some people say that children aren't getting the social experiences or exercise that they did in the past because they spend so many hours watching TV and sitting in front of computers. They argue that these activities are essentially passive and have a dumbing effect on today's children. Others argue that television and computers have expanded students' access to knowledge and made learning a much more dynamic process. What's your opinion? First, explain whether you believe television and computers have had a positive or negative effect on today's children. Then, explain the reasons why you feel this way. And in your conclusion, summarize your opinion. Here's a second topic. The 20th century was a period of rapid change and technological advancements. In your opinion, what was the most important invention of the 20th century? Why? Describe the invention. Then, give specific reasons why it has changed people's lives in an important way. In your conclusion, summarize your opinion.